B, and today I'll be showing you how to isolate and purify acetaminophen from Tylenol. There are two stages that I'll be going over. The first one will be using recrystallization to isolate and purify acetaminophen from Tylenol. And in the second part, I'll be showing you how to use a melt temp apparatus to determine the melting point range of your sample. So first, let's isolate acetaminophen. You should have already obtained six 500 milligram Tylenol tablets. Transfer these tablets into a mortar. And in this step, you're gonna grind these tablets into a fine powder. So instead of pounding these tablets, you're gonna pulverize them in a circular motion. And then once in a while, shake the mortar gently this will force larger particles of solids to go to the surface and then continue grinding to its own powder. Once the tablet is finely grinded, pour it into a 125 ml flask using a funnel. And you can use a little bit of deionized water to help wash them into the bottle. Now, you want to put in bloody chips. Once you fill up your total solution to the 50 ml mark, swirl around a little bit and put it on the hot plate. And also note that there are insoluble solutes in the solution, so it won't go completely clear. So while your solution is boiling, set up your vacuum filtration. And when you're cleaning your vacuum filtration, make sure that the funnel is like really clean and it is not clogged. The reason for this is because when you filter stuff, if there's something clogged in it, then it will take your solution longer to filter. Then put a piece of filter paper into the freshener funnel, wet it with some DI water. Now you're going to take your funnel cup and get some sea light. Um, sea light is essentially glass, so don't breathe it in. And you want to make an even layer of sea light, so take a small beaker and evenly smash down the sea light to create an even layer. It should be at least one centimeter thick. And once you have an even layer of sea light, put it back onto the freshener funnel. This will act as another layer of filter. And wet it with some DI water. So once your solution is heated, pour it your hot solution into the sea light. Tilt your glass at an angle. And filtering is a little tricky because sometimes it can get clogged. So some good tips to unclog it is to turn your vacuum on and off or lightly scrape the top of the sea light. Finally, there'll be at one point where no solution will pass through the filter. Notice how your filtrate is very milky and some acetaminophen has reached the bottom. The reason why is because when you're vacuuming out the air, it loses the heat and also it lowers the temperature and also lowers the solubility. So what you want to do now is pour this filtrate into a 150 ml liter beaker. And you want to get all the semi-fine from the bottom. And you can use a small amount of deionized water, but don't use too much. Once you get as much acetaminophen as you can, note the volume, put two to three boiling chips in, and then put it back on the hot plate, and let it boil until it reaches half of its volume. While this is working on boiling, make your ice bath, and then you want to chill 20 mils of deionized water to reduce this after the solution has reduced to one half of its volume, take your beaker tongs and place it onto your counter. Once the solution has cooled down to room temperature, place the beaker into the ice bath, and slowly your crystals should start forming. If it doesn't, take a glass stirring rod and agitate the bottom of the beaker. This will agitate the solution and form more crystals. Once the 10 minutes are up, take your beaker out and swirl it a little bit to loosen up the crystals before pouring it onto the filter paper. So the reason why we use ice cold water is because we do not want to dissolve our sample again. Remove the filter cup 
and transfer the isolated crystal with the filter paper onto the watch glass. Once time is up, open the oven and use test tube tongs to get your watch glass out. Now I'll show you how to use the melt temp apparatus. First, take a capillary tube, invert it, and then stamp some of the cinnamon in to the capillary tube. Once you get one to two millimeters of cinnamon into your capillary tube, invert it back and tap it to the bottom of the capillary tube. Now you can insert the capillary tube. It is important to know where your sample is because you have to observe the change. The change that you are looking for is the sample turning from a solid to a completely liquid. The start of the melting is the start of your range, and the end is the temperature at which all the solids have converted into a liquid completely. At the end of this lab, make sure you clean up your station, dispose all of these capillary tubes in the broken glass disposal, and all the solid materials like the sea light, the filter paper, and the cinnamon crystals into the solid waste container. Hence, this is how you perform this experiment. I hope it was clear and helpful.